This pattern I'm going to do right now is called the uh, Dox Black Thread Midge, and this one is listed on Fly Fishing Edmonton. This is a really simple coronamid. We're using a C49S Mustad hook. Uh, I'm using a size 10 for this, but that's the biggest I actually tie them a size 10. Usually I tie these in a size 14 or a size 12. And I'll go down to 16 if, you know, throughout the summer when they start getting a lot smaller. So I came up with this pattern again. It was a day at Star Lake and I had a, a more elaborate pattern that used um, that used actually this stuff. It was uh, super stretch floss. And uh, when I got home, I didn't have any more of that. So I was looking around for materials and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna use thread. So I just used thread. Um, but I did add a, uh, the gills to it just cause I felt kind of cheap just using thread. And it worked out really well. So I've pinched the barb, I put on this uh, black bead and the bead size is 764th. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip that bead down to the back there. And we're going to start our thread on here. We don't want to put a lot on, just a little bit. And we're going to use the midge gill for what it's actually meant to be used for. Midge gills. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip off uh, one strand of this. So I have the one strand and I'm just going to tie that in. And we're going to tie up this thread here. trim the back and now we're going to push the bead up so the bead fits over that nicely now. Now as far as trimming this off, um, I just want it a little bit longer than the eye of the hook. So about like that and you'll see once you fluff it up nicely you got some nice uh, midge gills there. So now we're going to start the thread again behind the bead. And we're going to take our thread down to the bend of the hook. And here it doesn't really matter if you're uh, covering the entire hook or not, but it will matter later on if you do or not. So we'll take it down to there and then we'll take it back up again. And we're going to tie in the gold wire. And usually when I tie in the gold wire, I stick it into the bead head. But because the larger end is now facing forward so that it fits over the midge gill, the wire won't fit into the bead head. There's a piece right there. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to tie this down the side of the hook. I'm going to do it on my side, obviously, but I'm just showing you. I'm taking it up to the bead head, I'm just going to tie it down the side of the hook. And the reason I tie it down the side of the hook, as opposed to on the top or whatever, it just makes the profile look nicer on the fly. And not only that, but you can see better for covering up all that wire with the thread, because that's what actually the body is, just the thread. So again, not super important that you're covering, covering up all the gold wire as you're wrapping down, but it will be very important on the way back up. You don't want anything showing through on the way back up. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna just keep turning. I wanna make sure that I'm getting all of the wire and all of the hook covered up. And if you have to go back over it, not a big deal. It's not going to bunch up and change the profile all that much by overlapping with the thread. Because again, this is a dot thread. 
And I just keep turning the fly just so I can catch, because the gold wire will catch in the light, and you'll be able to see if you missed anything. Okay. So now, once again, we're going to take the gold wire, and we're going to wrap up. And again, don't worry. You probably heard this before, but fish can't count, so don't worry about how many ribs you're doing here. Now you'll see a lot of fly tires when they're tying midges that they'll use the extra fine wire. I prefer the, uh, the small gold wire and the reason being is because you can really see uh, even in the camera here you can really see the segmentation and I think that picks up really well in the in the sunlight. You know, if you're fishing this 10 feet under and the sun's glistening off the ribbing, and if you look at actual real chronomens as they come up, the segmentation is like, you know, you can really notice the segmentation. So with the small gold wire as opposed to the extra fine, I find that uh, that it, it shows the segmentation just uh, very very much like the similar or, or very similar to the naturals. So we're just going to twist this off. And if you haven't seen that before, all I'm doing is I'm putting tension on the thread and I'm just uh, whipping it around there until it breaks off. And that way there's no tag end left. Okay, so we're going to wrap back a little bit. And now we're going to add our peacock curl. And what I like to use is two strands of peacock curl. It's a little bit more bushy. And this obviously represents the thorax. And I like to tie them in tips first because again, I find that it also is more bushy if you wrap them in tips first. But I like to break off, you know, a good inch of the tip because I find the material is just not very strong. So we're going to wrap that in. And a little trick I learned from Brian Beakley. You guys remember him? Mm -hmm. Does he still come? Occasionally. Occasionally. He uh, wraps his peacock around the thread like this. And it makes it a little bit more durable. Because peacock isn't the most durable stuff in the world. And we'll just wrap that around. Might have wrapped it around a few too many times here. And we'll tie that off. <coughs> and we'll give it a clip. And we'll tie off that thread. Last step, I use this uh, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. I'm sure you've all seen that before. You can buy that at Shoppers Drug Mart or wherever you buy I nail stuff. I use it on my toenails all the time. There you go. And the idea of this is you can see there's not a lot of sheen to the body other than the gold wire. So we're going to add this to add sheen. You don't want to get too close up to that peacock curl because it'll mat it all down. But we're just going to add some of this. And this stuff dries pretty quickly. So you just want to keep turning it. Maybe blow on it a couple times. And that's going to soak right up into that, uh, that thread. And it's going to give it uh, some nice sheen to it. Do you get a ball of that on the, t on the point of your hook? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no. You did sharpen that hook before you started tying them. No, no, I never. Never? No. You don't take out your file like Lee Wolf did and he showed, showed us how to sharpen the point Never, of the I've never done that before. Never done that? I don't even think I have a hook sharp. That guy could cast apparently 100 feet fly line with his right arm. Oh, really? With no rod? No rod. Hmm. Awesome. That's definitely great. That'd be impressive.
Chris? Oh, Fred was like that. Fred was like that. Part 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 Does anybody so have the other hook? Keeper. Oh, Fred was like that. 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 Fred was like that.